Welcome to Reading, Writing, Writing and Arithmetic. Um, I'm Mr. Chance, the band director at Dade Middle School and Dade County High School. And, and I'm, oh sorry. Go ahead. I'm Jessica Wilson, and Miss Wilson. I am the theater teacher at Dade County Middle School and Dade County High School. Uh, we're here to just relay some information today about the fine arts department for the two middle for the middle school and the high school. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm the band director, and Miss Chance, my wife, is the assistant band director. Mm -hmm. Gabriel Haston is the chorus director at both schools. Uh, Miss Wilson teaches theater at both, and we have Miss Heidi Wilson is the art teacher at Dade County High School. No Ms. relation to me. I get that all the time. <laughs> and Miss Brandy Gann is the art teacher at Dade Middle School. Um, we're going to just share some information of, the, of some of the things that are going on in the fine arts department, mm -hmm. uh, specifically with band and chorus right now. Mm -hmm. um, just in general, fine arts are extremely important to developing yes. a well-rounded student. Mm -hmm. um, there is numerous uh, research studies to show the benefits, um, not only socially that the students get from being involved in those activities, but also cognitively, yeah. the boost that they get to learning, mm -hmm. um, involvement in a music specifically, mm -hmm. it activates both sides of the brain and mm -hmm. test scores, you know, ACT test scores, SAT test scores, mm -hmm. for those students actively involved in music programs is greatly higher than the peers, their peers that are not involved in those programs. Yeah, there are a lot of 21st century skills that you gain from being a fine arts student. I know that a lot of my kids, we learn about creative problem solving. And I mean, you can take that skill to any job in the world. Uh, we also, across the fine arts, we also involve all uh, pretty much all other core areas mm -hmm. um, with band with music in general we are constantly doing you know reinforcing that basic math of mm -hmm. dividing down and multiplying out with rhythms and counting we're always trying to connect history and current culture to the music that we're playing mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that applies to what you're doing as well absolutely with all of our shows we try to find things that are current and relevant to our students lives and we find a way to connect it to make them more invested and their performances more sincere whenever they are becoming a different character other than themselves. And we we look at math as well. We do geometry with our scales model set designs and in building those sets up from a small set to like a, an actual set they're going to be using, we use math and construction skills in that as well. Um, if anyone would like to, you know, have more information about those benefits that are mm -hmm. students, any of us in the fine arts department would be glad to talk to you and point you to some of those research studies to yeah. see where, what benefits students get from those things. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to a little bit of stuff that's going on with the band program. We just finished up our annual garbage bag sale and we'd like to give a very big thank you to the local community for all the help with supporting that. Um, a band, running a band program is expensive. We, uh, you know, mm -hmm. purchasing music and instruments and having extra instructors for these students to give them, you know, specific instruction on their instruments, uh, running a color guard program on top of that, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a big endeavor. And without those fundraising opportunities and, and the support of the community, we couldn't do that. Um, and our students went above and beyond this year. Um, it's one of the biggest sales that we've had. And so thank you all for those of you that have helped support us in that. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have one other fundraiser coming up this year. And on March 7th at the high school, we have our mattress sale going on again this year. Mm -hmm. um, if you'd like to come from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. on that Saturday, you can come to the high school, to the commons area, and you can try out mattresses and they can do everything there as far as selling and they will deliver to you. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't um, know they delivered them. They would deliver them. That's um, so cool. Most, actually, we had several last year that purchased that didn't even live in the county and they delivered those to them. That's awesome. Uh, it takes about a week to a week and a half and all those mattresses are made to order mm -hmm. um, unless he has some that are there that are discontinued four models. He had several of those last year. Mm -hmm. uh, he may have some of those again this year, but uh, that was a very good fundraiser for us last year and nice. we're hoping to do as well with it again this year. I saw them. I didn't get to test them out, but they, they looked really comfy. Uh, there were a lot that were comfy. There, mm -hmm. uh, I had to force myself after walking around the commons area for eight hours to not go lay down on a few. <laughs> um, some other things that have been going on with the band program is we had this past Friday and was supposed to have also been Saturday, we had a concert camp with our seventh grade, eighth grade, and high school band students. We brought in instructors from around the area. Some are professional musicians. Some are 
um, college professors. One is a uh, music store owner in the Chattanooga area. Mm -hmm. And those individuals came in and worked with individual sections of students to help them and give them more input on their specific instrument mm -hmm. and to help work the music that we're using that we're going to be going to uh, LGPE in March. Um, we also had two band directors from the area, Mr. Bill Wynn from Heritage Middle School and Mr. Tracy Wright from Ringgold High School that came in and worked with our full ensembles as well to help with that music preparation. That's awesome. Unfortunately, we had to cancel Saturday due to the weather, um, mm -hmm. but the students still got a lot of benefit out of, of what we did on Friday. Yeah. Um, and so again, that, that takes us into LGPE, which is Large Group Performance Evaluation. That comes up for our kids in March. Mm -hmm. Our high school students will go, or sorry, our middle school students will go to Ringgold High School on March 13th. And so what happens is they perform, they work up and perform three pieces of music for a panel of judges. And then we will go from the stage into a separate room and those students get to sight read a piece of music that they've never seen before. Wow. We have five minutes to look over the piece. They can do everything except play. So they can clap, they can mm -hmm. count, they can finger through their parts. They just can't actually make a sound on the instrument. Huh. And then we have, then we perform that piece and we get feedback and a rating from that judge. That combines with the rating on stage to give us an overall rating that we're looking at for that performance. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a great opportunity for students to get feedback from other educators. The people that are judges at these events are band directors across the state of Georgia. Um, some of them are college professors. So they get this feedback from, from those people to let them know it's not as much for what rating they're getting as mm -hmm. it is for the feedback that they're getting from those people. Yeah. Um, our high school students will travel down to Woodland High School in Cartersville on March 18th. Mm -hmm. um, and again, same, same setup, the panel of judges giving them a rating for what they do. Yeah. Um, in preparation for our high school students going, we weren't able to work this out for our middle school just because of timing. Um, our high school students will be doing a pre-LGPE performance on March 10th. Um, at Dade County High School. That'll include the three pieces that were taken to LGPE, as well as one or two additional pieces that we've worked up. Nice. The middle school concert will take place on March 31st. Um, that will involve sixth, seventh, and eighth grade bands. Mm -hmm. the, the seventh and eighth grade band will be performing their LGPE pieces, as well as the sixth grade performing the things that we've worked on there. Um, our sixth graders are doing really, really well. Um, they put on quite a show at the at the Christmas concert, and they've made even more improvement then. A lot of people don't stop to really think that those kids have only been playing since August. Oh, wow, And yeah. so most of them didn't have any clue what to do on their instrument prior to, you know, coming into band in August. That's awesome. A lot of my sixth graders are doing really, really well, too. Um, it's been really fun to see them. A lot of them have never performed on a stage before, and their improv skills, and they're just, they're, their excitement to play has been so much fun to watch this year. Yeah. So every and every round of sixth grade that I've gotten has been so excited about it and take the play very they take it all very seriously. Yep. Mm. It's a good group of kids. Yeah. Um, and then in April on April thirtieth, our high school band will will have another concert and that concert will be mostly kind of a pops concert, some some movie themes and and we'll have some solos performances from mm -hmm. especially from our seniors mm -hmm. we give all we give seniors an opportunity to if they want one to pick a solo and they it's a solo with band accompaniment oh, and cool. so we'll have a few of those on that concert awesome. uh, we are also going to be premiering a piece of music mm -hmm. um, we were working in conjunction with dr. Kenyon Wilson at UTC to um, write a piece for us he's supposed to have something to us in early March so that we can start working on that mm -hmm. and it's a great opportunity for our kids to go through this process it's with everything else we play it's literally go on a website purchase a piece of music it comes in we learn mm -hmm. it we play it, you know we perform it this is going to let the kids take an opportunity to kind of go through from beginning to end with a composer. Yeah. So he's going to send us a rough draft, and we're going to be able to work on that a little bit and then provide feedback to him. Oh, that's awesome. And he'll make changes 
kind of as we see what we want changed, oh, what yes. we think needs to be changed. So, and he's going to come down some and work with the kids. So mm-hmm. it's that one-on-one, um, you know, composer to performer connection there that they don't get on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, so we'll be sending out, you know, it should be a big, big deal. We'll send mm-hmm. out a lot of information prior to that concert. Um, about what the piece is going to be and, That's so cool. and everything. They get to work with a professional composer and give their input, and he'll actually take that and put it into the music. Yeah, we That's worked. So cool. uh, they have, uh, Some of the kids, not many, uh, most of them have graduated, but we worked with Dr. Wilson uh, a few years ago. Mm-hmm. He uh, wrote a piece called Five that was written in dedication for the five soldiers that died in Chattanooga from the yeah. attack on the armory up there. Um, <laughs> And so we were, he did that as a commission consortium. So there were about 50 schools around the area and across the country that were part of that commissioning project. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we were close enough to him that he actually came down a couple times and worked with the students. Mm -hmm. And he conducted the piece on when we premiered it with the kids. So it was an awesome experience for them as well Mm -hmm. to be able to do that. So we're really looking forward to working with him again. Um, I've been in contact with him a few times already, you know, and he's kind of given, wanting some some feedback from us on on kind of some things that I would like to hear in the piece and different yeah. things. So mm-hmm. um, that'll be a, a fun opportunity for those kids. Yeah. Um, so that gets us through most of those band things that are going on from this semester. Um, kind of looking into next year with things, we always are having to prepare for next year before this year ends yep. so anyone that is interested in being part of the color guard program at dade county high school mm-hmm. um, coming in as a freshman next year or a current freshman through junior mm-hmm. those color guard auditions will be held april 14th through 16th mm-hmm. and 20th through 22nd mm-hmm. um, students do need to be there for all those days unless they you know Unless there's a, a conflict, they can talk to us beforehand and we can work out if they need to miss a day. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the majority of the things going on with the band program currently. Mm-hmm. And um, we're going to take a short break right now and we'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Thank you so much. Can you gig it? Oh, yes, you can. We know you've been waiting for a long time, and now Tennessee Valley Net is bringing it to you. Gigabit Internet Service, now available in certain areas of Dade County. Not just fast, super fast Internet Service, now available from Tennessee Valley Net. People are talking, I mean really smiling, about gig speed Internet, available in limited areas from Tennessee Valley Net. Call today at 706-657-4367 or log on at tvn.net and see if gig speed is available where you are. We know you'll gig it from Tennessee Valley Net. Hey, that cold weather is coming, and it's never too early to get your winter supplies from Rising Fawn Hardware and Supply. 4300 Highway 11 South in Rising Fawn. Everything you need to wrap pipes under the house. Winter rise around the doors. Make sure your outside faucets are protected, and keep those drafts from coming through the windows. Get your supplies for fall and winter for the home and farm today. Rising Fawn Hardware and Supply. 4300 Highway 11 South in Rising Fawn. Telephone 706 462 206 Seven one. Have lunch or dinner at Guthrie's, home of the original golden fried chicken finger and the best chicken finger sauce in the world. Guthrie's can help you plan your family's meals or get-togethers with bucket specials every Tuesday, those delicious wings on Wednesday, and platters every day of the week. Plus, get sweet tea by the gallon. Remember, Guthrie's has a party room for small gatherings, too. Guthrie's, Highway 136 West in Trenton, home of those golden fried chicken fingers and the best chicken finger sauce in the world. Guthrie's, not fast food, good food fast. A small bank with big service. Citizens Bank and Trust. Offering a wide range of services, including online banking. Pay your bills. Manage your account anytime, 24 hours a day. Your account balance is only a phone call away as well at 657-1234. Or visit our convenient locations. Lookout Mountain, Georgia. Higdon, Alabama. On our main branch on Highway 11 and Trent. Citizens Bank and Trust. 657-5678. A community bank that believes in the community. Citizens Bank and Trust. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. 
When you or a loved one is facing a life-limiting illness, hospice care may be the answer. At Tapestry Hospice, the patient is the focus of our care. We are here to serve you and facilitate your wishes. Tapestry caregivers are concerned with managing your pain, keeping you in touch with your physician, and helping you make plans for the future. Hospice is life-affirming, and Tapestry Hospice can help you deal with all aspects of life, mind, body, and soul. Call Tapestry Hospice for more information, 706-383-8812. That's 706-383-8812. Tapestry Hospice. Redefining Hope. The Moore family name has built a legacy of trust, compassion, and peace of mind by standing with families during time of loss. Now in our 70th year, the Moore family commitment grows even stronger from affordable traditional services to cremation. Our experienced staff stands ready to follow through on you and your family's wishes. Since 1945, the Moore family of funeral homes, North Sand Mountain and Trenton, always dedicated to those we serve. Good afternoon, and we're back with Reading, Writing, and Arithmetic. I'm Jessica Wilson. I'm the theater teacher at the middle school and high school, as Chris was telling us before. Um, I'm going to speak now about the theater programs at both schools and what we've got coming up this spring. Uh, so right now, my classes are performing improvised pieces. So we're learning scene games and games that you might see on the TV show, Whose Line Is It Anyway? We learn to improvise first because who knows? knows what's going to happen during a live show. I mean, set pieces fall down, doors get ripped off. Both of those things have happened to us during a show. And well, we've had we've had some interesting things happen during musical performances. Yes. So. But as long as the kids continue in character, the audience will be very forgiving and go with it. And I've also I've had audiences think that things that went wrong were actually just part of the show. So we did Christmas Carol a couple of years ago. Well, Oh gosh, it's been maybe four or five years ago now. <sighs> Time flies, you guys. So we had uh, Scrooge's office was up on a platform and he had a doorway to his office. And during, right before intermission, the curtains had to open and the curtain got caught on the door frame and pulled the door frame off of the stage. And it had a stagehand who was dressed as a period character just run out and pick up the door and carry it off stage. And then when Scrooge came back out, his door was gone. And instead of freaking out about it, he just said, what the devil? Where's my door? This, been, this neighborhood's been going downhill for years. And they thought they had, his door had been stolen by one of the stagehands. And, and the audience erupted into laughter. It was so funny. But because he was composed and stayed in character, the moment just went on and the show went on. The story could continue. So we learned how to improvise first, just in case any moments like that happen, the kids are always prepared to move forward in character. Um, but my high school class right now, speaking of, you were talking about how you're bringing in guest band directors and guest instructors to help your kids out. I'm doing the same thing with my improvised, with my improvisation class right now at the high school. My kids are gearing up for an improv showcase that they designed themselves, and it takes place on Friday during my class and I'll have three guest improvisers from Chattanooga come in and work with the kids and actually play with them in scenes and judge the scenes as well off stage. So the kids designed it to be Wheel of Improv. So it's all based on a game show. It's sort of a parody of that. Mm -hmm. And all of, I have seven troops. The kids divided themselves into acting troops in class. They all have silly troop names like theater wizards and they're all dressed as Harry Potters or the troopers or the holy guacamole and they're all dressed as cowboys. Just silly things just to get the audience engaged and get themselves engaged to play. So they will all sit in the audience and we have a couple of classes coming to watch them. And I'll be a game show host. We'll play game show music. They'll come up. We spin this big wheel that has improv games on it. And after each, after two teams go, we pick a winner. The audience picks the winner. And then they get a special prize like a new car, which is a Hot Wheels car, or a new washing machine, which is a washboard, or a brand new pack of Capri Suns, just something silly. So it's all in good fun, and it really helps with the students to break all the ice at the beginning of the semesters and to get them engaged and ready to play, just to act in general. Like that's, that's the heart of theater. It's just the ability to play, the willingness to get on stage and be big and silly and go to those deep you can't get to those deep emotional places unless you're willing to just play and be silly at first um so speaking of being silly uh we are gearing up also for our spring musical this year which is shrek the musical 
And this musical involves high school students, middle school students, and elementary students. And we've been rehearsing this since we came back from Christmas break. Uh, the cast is super, super stoked about it. And those dates for the musical are in April. So our show will take place April 17th and 18th at 7 o'clock and April 25th at 7 o'clock and 2.30. So we'll have a matinee and a night show all in one day. And then we're arranging some school shows as well for, for that time so that the, the kids get to come see it during the school day. But it's been, and we share a lot of kids. We do. Um, for band and for chorus and for drama and art. There's a there's a lot of students that are that aren't just a band student or an art student or that you find a lot of times with fine art students mm -hmm. that they're involved in a lot of things. Yes. Um, they're involved in other fine arts. A lot of them are involved in sports as yeah. well. Um, so and especially with being a smaller school like we are, mm -hmm. you know, you get a lot of that cross curriculum there where those kids are involved yeah. in a lot of different things yeah so we have to learn how to juggle all of those kids and work together to make sure that they get that they get to do everything that they want to do i never want to have a kid who plays soccer but they can't be in the spring musical i we the coaches also work with us like we all yes. work together to make sure the kids are afforded any opportunity that they want in the school system and we have so much i can't we have chorus band art and drama at the middle and the high school and for a school system and you know the schools themselves the size mm -hmm. that we are that is yeah that is incredible yes um, you don't find that in a lot of places mm -mm. Um, you know we have a very supportive school board mm -hmm. superintendent um, to work to make sure that all of those programs can exist and do yeah. exist here mm -hmm. um, the support as I mean I've taught in another school system in Tennessee before coming here and mm -hmm that support is not always universal yeah um mm -hmm. you know it's it's not freely given everywhere yeah i always feel really lucky i mean mr farney has run sound at our musical for the past two years and he comes to the improv showcases during class in support of the kids uh dr harris comes to the shows and buys a t-shirt and dr spivey comes to the musicals it's just everybody is so supportive and and the kids love it. They are always so excited when admin and board members and our superintendent come and see them get up there on stage and do their work. Yeah, it's they are, amazing. They are extremely supportive, and yes. we greatly appreciate that. We Very much do so. What we do without that. Thank you so much to all of you. <laughs> um, what else have we got coming up? So I'm doing a uh, a cross curricular project with that involves Davis Elementary third graders and middle school kids and high school kids. Oh, cool. So I gave, it's called Kid Theater, and I sent three different prompt questions to the third graders at Davis. I asked one class if you could have any wish come true, what would it be and who would grant you this wish? And we get a lot, we get a range of answers that are all wonderful. And then I asked another class um, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? What would your superhero name be? And what would you use the superpower for? What would happen to you? And in the last class I asked them uh, if you could design a new planet. What would it be called? What would be on this planet? Describe this new world that you've created. So we take these three prompt answers. I give these prompts to my three middle school classes. So one wish play, one planet play, and one superhero play. And my three middle school classes are all going to write short 10 minute plays inspired by these third grade responses. And nice. then I take the plays that were written and I give them to my high school class and my high school class is going to read them and decide which plays they want to see brought into production. And they're going to produce those plays. And so the third graders are going to come watch the show and the middle school kids who whose plays were selected, they're going to also get to come see the shows that they wrote come to life as well. So I just love that idea of one art form feeding into another. Yes. And that's always been a really just fascinating thing for me to look at a painting and see how it inspired a poem or a book and how that book inspired a play and how that play inspired a film. Just this string of storytelling and artwork that comes from this little just seed that started off as someone's idea. So we'll get to see all these different artistic ideas come together in a show at the high school. And that's gonna be April 1st during my class. And my kids are gonna get to invite their families. And if the community wants to come see it, that's totally fine too. It'll be April 1st during my third block class, which starts, the show itself will start at, let's see here, 11.45. 
and it'll go for an hour until about 12.45, 12.50. And the, the little third graders will get to ask questions of the middle school students and the high school students about the process of bringing their seed of idea, their seed ideas to life. And that's always really fun to hear what the little third graders have to say. Um, you know, it's, I've heard it for years, but the, the comment of, art imitates life and life imitates art is, mm -hmm. is very true. Oh, yes. um, you know, there's, we have, you know, speaking on the, on the music side of things, we have pieces of music that were written to just be pieces of music. Mm -hmm. But the majority of what is there was inspired by something. Yeah. Um, you know, there are plenty of pieces of music that are inspired by poetry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, life events inspire things yeah um and we anytime we play a piece of music that has a background like that that we can relate to students mm -hmm. you know we try to share that um a few years ago we played a piece called in the shining of the stars and it mm -hmm. was written for a band program in the atlanta area that had a clarinet instructor that came in a few times a week mm -hmm. and she passed away from cancer mm -hmm. and the director had a piece commissioned and the the composer asked the students that she taught to just write a little bit of something about her he wanted to know something about her to kind yeah. of base the piece on mm -hmm. and all but one of the kids just wrote a paragraph about her mm -hmm. and one kid just turned in a piece of paper that had some notes written on it mm -hmm. and it was you know it was five notes that mm -hmm. she had taught him to play in order to help with finger dexterity yeah and that became the whole piece the whole basis of the entire piece that's beautiful that's you know amazing. all inspired because that one teacher mm -hmm. helped one kid yeah to learn how to to do some things to fix some finger dexterity mm -hmm. you know and it's life imitates art and vice versa yeah and i love the idea the we've done this project before and i've had the the third graders will be they'll be very honest about where their ideas come from and um it's just it's amazing that they they get to see what they created come to life before their very eyes and they get to know that someone is listening to them someone took your idea and took it seriously and we're gonna make it happen I think that just that can follow them for the rest of their lives all my kids yeah. this idea that of course you can do this just try it. if they if my kids leave my class knowing that they are more capable than they initially believed then I've done something that's all I really want for them, is for them to go out in the world and know that they can be more if they just try. And that's that's a big key, yeah. for especially for anything in life, but mm -hmm. in the fine arts too. Yeah. You know, our main our main thing is we want the kids to be as successful as they can be, but mm -hmm. when it comes down to it, we want them to know that ultimately they need to try. Yeah. You know, they need to work at something, mm -hmm. whether it be music, whether it be you know theater whether it be visual art or you know math or science whatever yeah. you know we try to instill a work ethic in them and to get them to understand that mm -hmm. they're going to go further in life just by trying exactly yeah and Beyonce not to be, wasn't built in a day you know and not mm -hmm. to be afraid to try yeah and part of success is failure mm -hmm. you know yeah be be willing to try be willing to fail because you yeah. learn more from failure sometimes than you do from success it's so true and art is so subjective that sometimes one person who's judging you may love what you're doing and the next judge may not enjoy it at all yeah. but you have to keep going and keep trying and you learn from the failures and you learn from the successes yes so. mm -hmm. well thank you for joining us today on reading writing and arithmetic mm -hmm. and i'm mr chance and this is miss wilson mm -hmm. thank you Stay safe in the weather.